Welcome to Sentimental Simmer, a podcast made for emotionally attached simmers and storytellers with wild imaginations. I'm your host, Gloria, and I run Yellow Llama Co., a planner shop made to help simmers play with purpose. Every week, I talk all about things sim life planning, storytelling, and memory keeping. I'll also brainstorm new ways to obsess over our pixel people, whether they be in The Sims or another life sim game. And now let's get into it. Last episode, we talked about what makes us get emotionally attached to our sims and what we can do, which steps we can take to build that bond if we're having difficulty. Today, we're going to talk about how to get back to that once there's been a disconnect. As easy as it is to fall in love with your sims, it's easy to fall right back out of love. So what can you do if you're just not feeling it anymore? If you kind of have lost that emotional connection, you don't really care anymore about that sim, whether or not they die or... (gasps) God forbid, age up, you really just don't care anymore. You know if you are okay with turning aging on without a blink of your eyeball, of your eyelash, of your eyelid, then oof, you know, there's some there, there's some work you gotta do. So what can you do? I had the same problem with Florida, our deviant divorcee who was in it for the money and after my intervention decided to turn a new leaf and repair her relationship with her daughter and work on being an independent woman, a boss lady that was going to take Isla Paradisa by storm and be the most successful entrepreneur woman ever, build a huge hotel empire and all that good stuff. And she did, she succeeded and it was fantastic. She had a wonderful run. She fulfilled her mission and not only repaired her relationship with her daughter, but her daughter Palmyra moved right back in with her. Florida mended her trifling ways and started a steady and stable relationship without any cheating or trifling and she became the hotel module she was always destined to be. Everything was going honky dory. I had built all the add-on modules that is to be added on onto her hotel. Her relationship was in the green with her daughter and with her new man. Everything was going great. That's when things plateaued. Isla de Paradiso was also pretty buggy, but... (laughs) I would say I lost interest once there wasn't anything to take care of anymore. Florida, she was living her life. There was no more character development to be had as it so seemed. Palmyra aged up. She wasn't a teen anymore, so there wasn't much else new to discover with her either. Everyone was in stable relationships, successful. Everyone had reached where they wanted to be in life. And I wasn't sure where to go from there. Like, okay, if... We've gotten all the gots to be gotten. What is there now left to do? And so Florida and her story were beginning to lose their spark. Our love story had started so strong. My dear ward, Florida, had grown and come so far. But now I kind of felt like we had a fallout. Like, I just wasn't vibing like I used to vibe with her. Like, I didn't really care anymore, like I said. And definitely we had history. Like, she had a very strong identity that had morphed into something, even into an improved, enhanced version of her after God knows how many hours of gameplay. But now there was certainly something missing. Looking back on the screenshots and on all the fun we've had, you couldn't help but just feel stuck, bored, stagnant. It's a destiny we all are confronted with when we play this game. What, what could I do? How, how could I get out of this slump? And that's what I want to talk about today. I think just like for any parasocial relationship, you got to put the work in to keep the flame going. And so here are some steps to get back in to connect with your sim, to care about them again, and to go from Tamagotchi to Tamayes. One reason why we often disconnect from our sims, get bored, is when we lose focus. It could be shiny new thing syndrome, once a new pack drops, it's like, oh my god, I want to play horses so bad, that you end up creating a new save file, a new town, a new family just for that, and you kind of like forget about your old family that was totally just fine still, and you just ditch them. Or maybe you're playing a legacy gameplay, and you've got too many kids, like there's too many offspring, you lose focus is like oh my god who am I supposed to care anymore about when there's so many people now in the household too many irons in the pot so I think ways to 
refocus to get back into that connect is to think maybe in terms of the new thing syndrome, if there's a new pack, for example, is to think of a way to weave in or incorporate that new content in your existing sim story in an authentic way, like have it seamlessly fit into the storyline that you already have going for your sim. So it feels natural and not contrived. So for example, um, you can use a new feature to create a new goal for your sim to work towards. For example, I had created in Cass a sim called Keith Fox, who's available on BelovedSims.com um, via the dating site Love Finder for Sims. Shameless plug. And he is a musician. He's kind of more of a, like a vagabond. He's very, you know, free spirit, doesn't like tech. He wants to be connected with the world and nature and place he lives in. One of his future aspirations is one day to move to Chestnut Ridge and build a ranch. Now, this isn't just something he's gonna do tomorrow once the pack drops. This is something he would build towards. And so I think it makes whatever new feature it is that you wanna play with more realistic if it's not just something, uh, an overnight decision of your sim, and it's more something that you still are gonna work towards, like you're gonna earn that ranch. He needs to find a place, he needs to figure out what he's gonna do in Chestnut Ridge apart from doing a ranch, you know. You guys get all his ducks in order before he can actually make that move, but it's definitely a one day I would like to go. And that one day could be, you know, in sim time, two sim days, it could be a sim week, but it's something you can really look forward to because you um, plan it in a more organic way. In terms of having too many sims, like you lost focus because you have this really big family, you have a lot of spares and you don't really, really want to give up on them either. You know, you always, in these family legacy gameplays, you usually have an heir that is going to continue the family name. Or maybe you just have a few more sims in your save file that you really are attached to and it's getting too much it's overwhelming so you kind of feel unattached at the same time like you should definitely consider rotational gameplay if you are feeling like you can't focus anymore because there's so much going on or it's too many sims so with rotational gameplay you could play your offspring in the community in the town while also in parallel having your main family still exist so you could split off the family in three different new households instead of just one. Say you want to dedicate a week to each household and that way you still get to play with each sim that you're connected with without feeling too spread out because I think it can be pretty tough if you have like eight sims in one household and all are doing like different careers and everything. It's, it's a bit much to juggle but if you have them all in the same town and you just swip and swap between households then I think that could be easier to manage and that would allow you to still stay and feel connected to each one of them because you're able to give them your focused attention each time you switch to that new household. Coming back to the whole shiny new thing syndrome, new pack, new mod, or something you put new in your game. I think with rotational gameplay, if you are playing different households, then maybe instead of creating a brand new save file with a new family for the new Chestnut Ridge pack, instead you just create a new household within the same save file and you rotate between your main squeeze family number one and the new, oh, I'm having a ranch and some horses family in Chestnut Ridge. And so you can play them in rotation. Again, you know, maybe focus a week on one family and a week on the next week on the other family. So a sim week. That way you're not compromising your main story by like throwing in a random horse. Either think of a way to naturally weave in that new thing or just create a new household and play them as well. So another reason why we get bored or disconnected from our sims is when we feel overwhelmed. And so I touched slightly on this with losing focus. Like if you have too many offspring, for example, that can be overwhelming. You can also be overwhelmed if you just don't know what to do next in your story. You have decision paralysis. Maybe you have a tendency to perfectionism. You have this story thought up and once you've reached that point, you just don't know where to go anymore with it or... Yeah, for example, with Florida, um, everything was going great, but at some point I also didn't really know what to do yet with her. And it can be really taxing to have to think of new creative input, especially if you feel like certain sim versions don't really prompt you as well as past ones did for new storyline. Again, that GDC conference I was talking about, the creative director was talking on how the game is kind of like improv in the sense that it, it has that yes and improv strategy of the sim or the game spits something at you and you kind of roll with that and spit something back. It's kind of like your sparring partner, partner in storytelling, so to say. I mean, I personally definitely feel like it was easier in The Sims 3 
to do that than in The Sims 4. But still, I mean, we have an imagination no matter what game we're playing. And I think we can tap into that imagination and our creativity. We are all super creative. It's just a matter of, okay, how can I deal with this? I am in a state of overwhelm. I don't know how to make my ne next decision. And I don't have the energy right now. I don't have the creative energy to think of something new. Instead of giving up on your sim and not really caring anymore, you can use some tools to help you move forward. Here, just use randomness randomness, <laughs> and fate to decide your next move. So for example, get out an eight ball. Like there are digital eight balls online that you can use. Ask a question that maybe you've been asking about yourself, like what you want to do next and have it be like a yes, no question and then throw it at that eight ball and let it decide your next move. Or maybe use chat GBT for that. For all that matters, that can also help you get the ball rolling. A tool I think is super fun and useful is called the In-Game Activity Generator by Papacita. And this is a website you can go to. I'll have it linked in the show notes. It is really a great tool to literally roll the dice on your Sims Destiny. So it has about 83 different scenarios listed. It can be as simple as playing the guitar to something more drastic like somebody dying, I believe. These are really fun different actions or outcomes that your Sim can have next in their lives and all based on which number you roll. So there's a little number generator at the very top of the page that lets you click on it to roll it figuratively and it gives you a random number and that number coincides with one of the listed points. And so you can go down a list to find that number and then you see what is next in your story, what action you need to take next. And you can just keep doing that until you feel inspired again. And then I think you'll also feel invested again. Once you're inspired, I think from there you're gold. Using a bit of randomness to help spur that inspiration and help prompt that story can really help. The prime example and reason why I got bored with Florida and here we're coming to our last step here is when sim lives get stagnant. They're too rich. There's no more challenge. I can't envision a future with them anymore. Things have just become too easy. I'm bored. What can you do to bring back the spark? A lot of things. For one, create an obstacle. Take some of that money away, for example. Ain't nothing stopping you. There are plenty of cheats out there. You could take the money away, make them grind again. Or you can have your sim develop a difficult trait. You can cheat that trait in <laughs> and give them something that'll make their life harder. Think about where they are right now in their life, what maybe in particular would make their current rosy situation less rosy. Give them a midlife crisis. In The Sims 4, it's really cool. I think now it's actually possible the game can give you a midlife crisis, but don't wait for that to happen. Just do it yourself. Have your Sim randomly quit their job and change their lifetime aspiration. Maybe break up with their, their husband or do something wild and crazy. Create some form of obstacle to bring in some spice and some excitement back into their lives and bring that challenge back. You can also create conflict by adding a love triangle. You can put a cow plant in their office, like a hungry cow plant, kick a gnome. Those gnomes are not playing. Like if you mess with them, they will make your life really hard. And so kick a gnome and see what happens. Like literally see what happens. It can be really fun. Another way to help things get less stagnant and less boring is to give your sim a new future. In the sense of Florida, she had a future that I had contrived for her. She's made that happen for her. But okay, now it's kind of like a black box. What do we do next? Well, think of something new. Or in the case of Florida, I actually ended up focusing more on her daughter, Palmyra, and figuring out a future for her. And Palmyra's future is inherently connected to Florida's future. So it made Florida also interesting and as a person, a very important person in Palmyra's life. You can also, to make things a bit more manageable and less overwhelming, instead of creating like this overarching, oh my God, end of the life goal, this huge goal that'll take forever to get to because it's not something that you're planning on being able to achieve the next few sessions anyways, maybe create some short-term goals that will help you stay excited for just the next few game sessions, right? So maybe focus on some goals for life stages. Another way to help things move along, I know it's hard, but turn aging on. It'll help things progress and it'll give you that pressure you need to actually like move forward and 
it make, it'll make things more meaningful. If you turn aging on, it'll create immediacy in your game. But I know it's really hard because we're attached. <laughs> to want to let go and it's the zen so we don't have to because we can turn an aging on uh, off i know i know but i think turning aging on can really make things feel more meaningful because this might be the last time you do xy with your sim or last chance because the clock is ticking yeah it makes also their choices more meaningful because they only have a, f a finite amount of them to make also a way to make things more exciting ruffle things up is to introduce some form of unique element. So that could be a new feature from a pack, or it could be a new relationship, you know, plop a new sim in that world, see what happens, or have your sim move to a new house or a new town entirely, maybe renovate, add something new to their life in a significant way. And I think that will help make things more interesting and it'll help you feel connected again to your sim because they've got like this crazy love triangle that you now have to navigate. Get creative with it. We all know always and forever, that is the dream. It's also a reason why we don't turn aging on. Sometimes you really have fallen out of love and it's gonna stay like that. Like you, you just can't, you don't care anymore about your sim. That can happen. And you know, sometimes a story has played its course and it's just time to move on. Just like that good book you started, you read it to the end, there is no part two, it's over, right? That's how most books end, they aren't a series. And sometimes you just have to accept that, that, you know, maybe that story you had with your sim, maybe you really have played it through to its end and yeah, have to let them fly the nest. Arrow will turn aging on and <laughs> let death capture them. What can help is, you know, maybe you just need to refocus not on a different aspect of their lives, but just on a different sim. Someone maybe from within their story, but that gives everything a new perspective and potential. That's what I did with Florida. I basically just decided, okay, you know what? I'm not going to conjure up a new future for her. I'm actually going to focus on her daughter who has, you know, aged up and has a future of her own and had found a new guy. And we decided to move to a new world because Ella Paradiso was bugging out. I was then super excited about where Parmir was going to go in life. And, you know, by default, her mom was part of that story because she was going to, you know, support her. But I really let Florida rest in her laurels and her success. So I didn't take anything away from her. And I just let her take a back seat while her daughter, Pamira, took center stage. So we packed up everything for a fresh start in a new town and new challenges. And this time with Pamira as the star. Yeah, it was really fun. Like Florida took on that new role as a supporting mom while her daughter reigned in a new chapter of the story. And... It can also be fun, like say you're just playing an adjacent sim that is not related or in the same household. It can also be fun when you decide to change to a different sim, whether it's a pre-made or somebody who has been somehow involved in the story as a whole. It's fun when you run into that other sim, that old, you know, first flame, and think about all the memories you've had with them and the history they have now within that save file, um, within their community, and everything that they've achieved. And of course, you can always relive those good times when you're looking back on old screenshots. Yeah, I hope this helps you fall back in love if you really want to with one of your sims or maybe even helps you, yeah, like go and accept that maybe sometimes that spark isn't to be found again. And it's just, it's okay, you know, you had fun while it lasted with that sim. And the beauty of the sims is you can create endless amount of new sims. Sometimes we give up a bit too quickly on our sims. There's still so much more we could tickle out of them. That starts with the, really the first episode where I was talking on how to actually connect with them and feel invested. Because I feel if you don't get to that point, then you could get bored quite quickly with a sim. But I think once you are emotionally invested, usually that sticks with you for a good, a good amount of time so you can play a, a strong long-term storyline. And then I think most of us are so attached to our sims that we... Yeah, we just don't turn aging on and we just forever play them <laughs> in a certain life stage. It has its merit to also explore new sims, new storylines, to just let our other sim live their lives, maybe without our guidance anymore. That can be fun as well. So I invite you to dig out some old saves and see if you can rekindle the flame, see if you can get that spark back, and if you can freshen things up with a new storyline and have fun with a sim or two from your past. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about backstory. I think that's a super strong way to create a character that from their own history inspires 
their story and also how they would make decisions. I think that's super fun to develop a backstory. We're going to get into that in the next episode. If you had fun listening to this, then please make sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. And thank you so much for listening. Until then, bye!